All right, that was uh, Maxwell, Bad Habits. I remember when conservatives uh, like uh, Condoleezza Rice and uh, Colin Powell uh, represented the conservative, they were black people who represented the conservative party. Uh, they were Republican. Uh, I did not agree with them, but they were respected. Um, you respected them. When did we go from people that you respect and have honest disagreements with? Because I never got the sense um, that Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice had a disdain for black people. I just, I believe that they had a different ideological difference that I vehemently oppose and disagree with, but I never sensed that they disliked or hated black people. Contrast that with today's conservatives, what it, where membership seems to, it, it, it seems to entail you selling your soul and vehemently hating your people. If you don't hate them, you certainly can manage indifference for them. When do we, when do we go from Colin Powell and Condoleezza Lisa Rice to Diamond and Silk and Sage Steel? When did that happen? And, and now, it, it, case in point, Sage Steele was on a podcast of, uh, you know, of, of, of Cutler, who was famous for having a big arm and nobody to throw to and a mediocre quarterback at best, right? Um, so he was talking to her, uh, and she basically, the, somehow the conversation uh, came up about Barack Obama and how he was listed on the census as, a, as an African-American, which is interesting because I don't know that anybody knows what he put on his uh, senses or not. I don't know if that's public information. I don't know if that's anybody's business. And she further intimated uh, that he, he, he claims to be black, but he never knew his father. So uh, I think one of the things that seems to be uh, in common parlance around black conservatives is they have to say the, sh the evil things that white people wouldn't say. They have to say the hateful things they wouldn't say. Ahmaud Arbery, Cameron Owens got to go out and call him a, ki a, a hit killer. She has to say he's a criminal. She, they have to intimate they deserve it. Larry Elder will say the evil things he says. So you, you have to be willing to hate and denigrate your people. Uh, and Sage Steele is the latest example of someone who has at least indifference toward uh, their, their own kind, their color. Um, now, it's interesting because since the, census, the story of the census came up, the first census was taken in, what, 1790? Um, and the, 18 city, the 1870 census was the first one to include African Americans along with the rest of the population. For, so for that first 100, almost 100 years, you were, they, they didn't count you at all. And it's interesting because the term um, biracial didn't appear to the 2000 census, right? Because before that, between 18, you know, the 1790 and 1870, if you were a black person, you were most likely called a mulatto and you were probably the project, pro product of rape, right? <laughs> probably you had a black a white father who raped your mother and you were a mulatto because they, they didn't make these kind of distinctions. So in 2000, you get to declare whether you were biracial or not. So all this time, we were a country for the last 20 years or so. Now you can have a, uh, there's a special dispensation for biracial people, which is very interesting to me because whatever Obama put or didn't put on his census, it didn't matter at all. I'm sure that in this country, if you, you were one time, if you had one drop of black blood in you, you were black. But it isn't what you write on your sisters. It isn't your political affiliation. It is how the country sees you. I guarantee you that if Sage still got pulled over or if she was running from the police, they would describe her as a black woman. They wouldn't go to her senses and see how she described herself. Obama never needed to describe himself or call himself black. He, he, he did, he, I could tell they thought he was black by the way they call him nigga all the time. So race was always, it's always people like the Sage Steels or the Candace Owens or the Larry Elders or whatever uh, uh, conservative de jour is. They have to decide not only to have a different political ideology, but to be hateful to the people they came from. I never noticed that with Condoleezza Rice. I never, and I think Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell were, were part of the, one of the most destructive administrations in the history of the United States in terms of foreign policy. But I never, but hate wasn't the predicate. I still, at one point, Colin Powell probably could have ran, ran and won or at least done very well for president. But I never noticed that his entry into the conservative movement was hate. And now it seems to be. And now it seems to be hate and mediocrity. Hate and, 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 and the ability to say the most vociferous things to people because they can't say them. I don't know what Sage still sees herself as. I know that ESPN doesn't think much of her. 
I know that when Sage Seal got in trouble, nobody came. The the, the, uh, the nobody from the biracial committee came to protest. I bet when Pam Oliver got in trouble, a bunch of people went to her defense and probably got her gig back. Was Sage Steele getting in trouble? Did Jay Cutler show up or any of the other people she has an affinity for? Did they do that? No, they didn't. Because they care about you probably as much as you care about black people. When they got rid of Jamel Hill, there was a hue and cry. Jamel Hill said, I'm going on, and she's done very well for herself. What, when did the predicate become that you can have a different, like, we? I, I don't agree with one thing she agrees with, but I do, I, I, but I, I don't think that the predicate, the idea that to have a political difference, you have to despise the people you come from. The census was to keep a track of how many they got and what areas they got them in. The option that you now uh, proudly brag about, Sage Steele, didn't even appear until <laughs> at least halfway through your life. And now all of a sudden you get to say these things. You get to say, well, he never knew his father. That's the predicate. So because I never knew my, I didn't meet my father until I was 35. And guess what? I knew I was black. I, I didn't have to, <laughs> I didn't have to, I didn't have to. Uh, st so does knowing your father change your DNA? Does knowing your father or mother or not knowing them change your, her your, your, your heritage? Does knowing of your father or not knowing your father change the way society looks at you? Barack Obama and you weren't black because you decided or not didn't uh, decided not to put it on a people, piece of paper called the census. You were black because that is the way the nation sees you. I don't care how you see you. I don't care what you claim. It is how they see you. And I guarantee you this. And whether you like to admit this or not, you are treated the way they see you. There's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. This is the D.L. Hubert Show.